This video is about a project I found on GitHub called Relaxed. It is one of several different projects I've followed on something I'm interested in, which is generating PDF documents from HTML or Markdown. This is probably one of the better ones that I've seen. It was trending on GitHub a little while ago. And this is its repository. It's relaxed.js slash relaxed. It has a couple examples of what it's capable of and some of the good ones that I like are let's see this one, I'll open this one and I'll open this one and we'll look at those in a minute. It's a basic npm install, you install it globally and use it from the command line and you can use it against pug documents which are a certain type of HTML templating language. Uh, it looks like this and you can combine that with references to images, charts, and that sort of thing, as well as uh, markdown files. So if I scroll down here, this shows the general way that it works. And it works using something called Puppeteer, which is a um, Chrome, basically a Chrome instance that runs headlessly. So it doesn't require, it doesn't actually show anything, but it's running uh, and it can do things such as take screenshots of what's actually on the page or do anything a browser can do sort of in an automated way. So the actual process here is kind of more convoluted than you'd think for generating a good looking PDF but the output looks pretty nice. Um, they have several different uh, libraries for charts and flowcharts. Um, I haven't used any of those except for chart.js but you can make files like this and when you spin up the command it will create an instance of Chromium and take the, you know, use the browser to render everything appropriately and then save them as an SVG or PNG. The next thing it does is take your actual pug templates, render it as HTML using Node, render any CSS, take any markdown, render it to HTML and put it all into one HTML file here, then put that into the browser and export a PDF from there. So it's a little convoluted um, and installing it is actually more complicated than this readme implies. Here is um, an example. This renders a few chapters of Alice in Wonderland. Uh, the PDF is a certain size and it has a like a small bookish feeling to it and a, and a bookish kind of font. Another example is a chart that looks like something you might see in a uh, really graphical textbook. Now I created a basic boilerplate on my own GitHub just as the bare bones of what you need as a repository to make a PDF, sort of tailored to the way I, I kind of like. It's based on the book template uh, of this PDF here, but the pages are a little bit bigger for the default uh, style sheet. And I just put this here mostly as a reference. One thing that's worth noting is that since I like to do things on EC2 instances in Amazon's uh, cloud. Installing Relaxed uh, was not enough to get Puppeteer working. There's a lot of things that aren't installed on these EC2 instances that I had to go through to get installed in order to actually get a headless Chrome working. So I found an article that's linked here that helped me install, do all the uh, yum ins installations of certain things I had to have to get it working. Once that works, uh, as long as Relax.js is globally installed through NPM and Puppeteer is working properly, everything else is fairly straightforward. The basics, uh, here's the basic file system. Uh, all you really need is a book.pug, a book.scss for the style. If I open book.pug, it, it references the style sheet, and then it references an image and several markdown files and has some style information in line as well. And this is based on the, the book example. So I'm going to go here to uh, my cloud instance and do a little git clone. HTTPS github.com jfmario relaxed boilerplate. And let me make sure I'm using node 8 here. Looks like I am. 
I'm going to change directories into that and let me go ahead and open some of the files on the side. The PDF and HTM are actually going to be regenerated every time. The actual files are book.pug and book.scss. So I'm going to open the pug files like I did on GitHub. It references asset slash mountain jpg. That's in the same working directory. That's this uh, image of a mountain I found off Wikimedia. And then in source, several markdown files which I filled. I put some sentences here, but the other two are filled with some generated lorem ipsum text. So actually to demonstrate the point I am going to delete the existing PDF. I'm going to delete the existing temp.htm and run the command here. Let me make sure it's just um, npm i wait no, I've already installed it. I think if I just type relaxed it's going to take a minute. Oh, I have to type relax and the name of the input file, which is book.pug. So now it's watching pug. This is one downside about the build process. I wish, and there was actually some comments. Um, let me scroll up to the issues. I wish, and there are actually some other requests for a way to do a one-time generation of... I'm not seeing it here. It might have actually been addressed. But I would prefer to do a one-time generation of the PDF. What this does is it watches your uh, files, and once you make a change and save it, then it generates it. Then if you make another change and save it, it generates it all again. That's sometimes preferable, but I don't. That's not always what I want. So I wish it had an option to do just a one-time generation. That's how I would usually use it. But since it's watching, and that's the only option, I'm going to just make a trivial maybe backspace and save and it detected that change it's and it's done so let me first look at book temp.htm it appears to use a different naming convention than when I first ran this uh, and it's got all the CSS it's built an HTML file now what it actually did is it built this HTML file and then put it into the Chromium browser and exported the PDF. And that's this PDF here. Let me go ahead and scroll down. It says example book. That's all from the pug. And then here it's got that mountain file that was referenced. Introduction. And then automatically, because the CSS is configured to automatically add a page break between chapters. And then here's chapter one and chapter two. And as long as you know what you want and how to write the CSS, you can write the CSS to make the book or whatever output PDF you're trying to make look exactly how you want. Uh, it's pretty versatile. What I've noticed, I guess the downsides that I've noticed are that, well, the main downside is that you have to watch instead of being able to do one-time generation. The other downside is that sometimes, if I'm doing a lot of things at once, when it tries to generate the PDF, sometimes I get a blank PDF, which means some error took place, but errors aren't well reported. Those are the two downsides. Other than that, I've seen, I like this way of doing the PDFs. I like the way it uses Pug, Markdown, and some of the other technologies I like to use. And I like how easy it is to configure it exactly how I want. So other than some clunky things with the tool itself, I really like the framework, and with a few changes, this would be an excellent uh, way of generating PDFs from source code.